Ducks leader. Uh, run a little behind, so we'll just uh, launch right in. I'm going to take, a, as uh, Prashant said, a, a little turn towards accounting technology uh, that isn't specifically about cloud, but it is a lot about cloud, and uh, not specifically about anything Zoho makes per se, but I'm just going to talk to you from a guy who spent the last 18 years in QuickBooks land uh, telling everybody about uh, how to use QuickBooks, how to troubleshoot QuickBooks, what's good about it, what's bad about it. Um, uh, I'm going to take that perspective and then the last five or so years of, well actually 10 or so, 12 I guess, because I was all over NetLedger when it first came out, which is now NetSuite. Uh, I definitely have been seeing this trend toward the cloud, so I, I want to just kind of talk to you about where we are today with what I call the paradigm shift. Uh, that really started over 10 years ago, but I don't think it really took hold until the last couple of years. A uh, little bit about my company. Uh, I've got a uh, accounting software consulting uh, group of about 600 members. Uh, Tim Grant here is one of the people in our group. We've been um, kind of becoming the, 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 the company that all of the accounting software consultants listen to for the rest of the story with some of the software. So these comparative, what this does or that does, those are some of the kinds of things. We have a blog, sleeter.com slash blog that you can go to that really kind of drills down into uh, new features of various products. We're still very focused on QuickBooks, but QuickBooks and beyond is what we're kind of talking about. Uh, I write a column for the CPA Practice Advisor. Uh, if you don't get that and you're interested, it's, it's really aimed toward the accountant and the, or the consultant to small business. Uh, so I'm uh, in, in that group. And then uh, Accounting Today has this award that they, they give out to uh, most influential. Uh, <laughs> I guess if you do a conference, you get to have influence. So I try to use that carefully. All right, so I want to talk about the old world first, because it helps us with context. Some of you never knew the old world. You only know the new world. Some of you, I see a little bit of gray. Uh, lived in the old world for, for, for a long time, so let's just describe it. And actually, most, if you look at how QuickBooks has two, two or three million users, and that's the desktop version of QuickBooks, most of the world still is in the old world, because I'm going to describe essentially what happens when you're a QuickBooks user and you have your accountant and you're trying to get your, your work done. So the client's in their office, the accountant's in their office, they communicate one way or another, they both have desktop servers and LANs. A lot of you guys are so far ahead of this, but again, let's just kind of humor me for a minute. Uh, the problem is when the data, when it comes to the, the concept of doing accounting, uh, which often has to do with the tax return at the end of the year, or at least the financial statements, maybe audits, maybe reviews, those kinds of things, the accountant does get involved. So how do they get the data? Well, it used to be a shoebox. And uh, now, and more and more, it's things like file transfer uh, or remote desktop into the client's live data. Uh, but most of the time, the accountant is coming, uh, is, is uh, requesting copies of the data, whether that's paper copies, the receipts in the shoe boxes, or copies of the QuickBooks file in some form or another. This is uh, extremely uh, uh, inefficient. It's very insecure, unsecure, uh, uh, from the perspective of PCI compliance or anything you care about in terms of fraud or, or security issues. For me as an accountant to have my client's data sitting on my uh, desktop in my office, on my land, where my employees and their, their, uh, their uh, friends that come in to have lunch or whatever, they're my client's data is in my possession. This is bad in almost any way I can paint it. I have to have it to do my work, but this is bad. And a lot of the times people throw out when they're uh, worried about or when they're resisting going to the cloud, they say, well, it's not secure. Well, I'm saying that's not secure. Okay, so it's, it's for sure that the cloud isn't totally secure, nor, nor will it ever be. But let's just be fair. It wasn't secure before. It's actually less secure uh, in, in an environment like this where uh, all of the credit card data that sits in the QuickBooks file happens to also be you know, over at the accounts office. And the client no longer has, no longer has control of it. Anyway, 
so it's expensive, it's complex. We've got to coordinate with the client in order to get to the data, whether that's remotely accessing it. We've got to say, please, you know, let me log into your system and get the credentials and all those sorts of things. Uh, usually it usually involves, if you're using things like go to P my PC or whatever, you're going to consume the machine you're logged into, consume in the sense that nobody else can be sitting there using it at the same time. Terminal server gets over that. If you guys are in that world, you know about that. So there are ways to mitigate this remote access, and a lot of people are using that because it's, it, it actually gives us many of the benefits I'm trying to get to. Uh, but it's complex, it's expensive, uh, and certainly if there's copies of data going back and forth, your, your data gets out of sync. So how many people here are QuickBooks users? Okay, anybody doing any accounting, software, consulting, accountant side of the equation? Yeah, you are. So, um, have you ever had a situation, I'm going to assume most of you are a little more technical than a typical user, but maybe. Uh, you send the QuickBooks file to the accountant. First of all, anybody send your file to the, to the accountant? Yes. Okay. Have you ever had a situation where, okay, I sent the file, the accountant has it, they're working on it, so I have to do nothing until they get it. Is that where you are? Is that where you are? You're waiting until they get it back because they have it. Because, of course, if you put data in and they've got it and then when they send it back to you what are you going to do? You put stuff in here and it's out of sync. So this is the problem. Of course, Intuit has gotten wise to that years ago, eight years ago, whatever, even more. Did something called the accountant's copy where the client can send a special copy to the accountant. Uh, and if they do the accountant's copy approach, then you can keep entering data here and when the accountant sends it back, you can incorporate those changes into your live file. And you're saying, no, I don't like that. Well, you're right. I don't like that either. If you've had experience with it, you might have seen that that's somewhat restrictive to both accountant and client. The point I make really is just to say, this is a hassle. I don't care how much they try to fix it or, or make us have better ways of doing it. It's still a hassle and, uh, and it's inefficient. So there's this new world emerging. Uh, and this is where the client and the accountant, again, are in different offices. And uh, now we're going to use the cloud to centralize the data right in the middle of that yet little red area. And we're going to surround that data with security and software. So software first and security. So this model now is kind of my new uh, way of describing to the non-techie how it's different from their desktop sitting in their office. Now it's in the cloud. It's surrounded by the one piece of software, instead of 15 different versions of software, for the accountants, we've always had to have every version of every software on our desktops in order to serve all those different client possibilities. And that's always been a big pain for us to have. So now, if my clients will always all just put their data in the cloud, then I'll get to it, and they'll get to it. And whatever version or whatever system they happen to be running, I'll have access to the same thing. So we're always going to be looking at the same thing. Uh, and of course, looking at live data, so when I uh, do stuff to it, uh, the, the client sees it. Of course, security is the big, big issue, and it's the thing that many people resist on this, on this whole trick. When it comes to accounting software data, it's, it's highly secure. It's got payroll, it's got credit card information, it's got bank feeds, it's got uh, pretty much everything it would take to completely um, steal or, um, you know, uh, uh, identity theft uh, on the client's information. So uh, security is critical, and there are a lot of mitigate, mitigations of the security issues. So all of these uh, cloud-based uh, hosting companies of course, they start with highly secure facilities where armed guards with 24-7 security with, you know, Uzis in their hands or whatever, uh, card access, all that stuff. Now, I don't know any small business owner in the, in the world that really has uh, in their office 24-7 uh, security. And even if they do, I bet uh, somebody could get in to come and visit the, uh, the bookkeeper for lunch and just come on in and maybe has a a little uh, thumb drive and just pulls it out of the pocket and and you could do this even even without too much people noticing and so there all the data is uh, being stolen right off of any of the desktops. So the point about security is 
physical security is much more secure in a hosted facility uh, or any cloud-based uh, facility. And then all of those facilities are being then run, and you have uh, <laughs> you have babysitters of the hardware all around, making sure that nothing is is, is broken. Um, I'm trying to remember some some cartoon I saw where you know the, the, the manufacturing floor of the of the future is a whole bunch of robots uh, working on uh, creating or manufacturing all of the things. And there's a, one guy there whose job it is to make sure nobody else touches the robots. <laughs> so we're not working there. We're just keeping people away from it. So uh, anyways, so this is the security issue is much more dealt with. It's not like it can't go wrong. And of course, when you have a hosting facility with a whole bunch of data in it, then it's a higher value target for the hackers and, and so forth. So there's a lot of, of logical security, if you will, or software security that is also put into these hosting uh, facilities. So what I would always recommend you do when, if you're choosing a, a cloud-based solution or a hosting facility of any kind, is ask a lot of security questions. There's uh, uh, a lot of them that, uh, well, I don't know anybody specifically that cut corners, but it's very easy for them to just get up and running and then deal with security later. You want to make sure you deal with that before you get to be their customer. So what is this doing then in terms of paradigm? It starts to cha change the way the client does things and the accountant does things. Over the past 20 years or so, the clients have taken control of the general ledger. Whereas if go back far enough, it used to be your, your accountant is the only one that could do a financial statement on that tax return. You didn't have financial statements in your business. Uh, so the general ledger, which is at the core of the financial statement, that was owned, if you will, by the accountant. But then along came Quicken and QuickBooks and Peachtree, and there's a whole bunch of products in that area, for the desktop PCs that allowed the client to just Write, it, write their own checks, do their own invoices, do their own bank uh, statements and, and reconciliations, those sorts of things. Well, that uh, is that was seen as a freedom for the client. You know, Just like we had to go to mainframes to the PC, we went from accountant-based accounting financial statements and tax to client-based everything. Now we can do our financial statements out of QuickBooks. We can use TurboTax and do our taxes, and we don't need the accountant anymore. Well, what's happened, though, is over those 20, 30 years of that maturing, uh, clients tend, ha have, have come to realize they do need help. No matter how much software I give a client, they're always going to need something that they don't know about. They, they're doing their business. They're not doing accounting and tax. So they're always going to need the services of the accounting profession. And uh, so what we're seeing, and, and the best news, I think, for both clients and accountants, is that by allowing the uh, equal access to the data, now we can change who does what. A little bit back to the way it used to be, but actually even better. So instead of the client now entering transactions all the time, uh, and doing payroll, and doing bookkeeping transactions that hit the general ledger, we want the client to focus on managing the data, managing the operations. So pick, pack, and ship, or uh, analyzing margins to make sure that we're pricing right. So operational things in the business is where the client businesses uh, uh, should, should operate, right? They're going to need to do timesheets to the extent we're still tracking time. But if you have any, any you know, 90% of the business out there still are paying at least some people on uh, based on uh, hours. Uh, so we're going to track timesheets. We're going to do job costing at the client. And job costing really is a process. There's different types, but the concept of tracking, uh, you know, specific activities to jobs. And it's sometimes hours spent by employees. Sometimes it's purchasing by for a particular job. Those kinds of things. That, that has to be over on the client because the client is running the business. That's part of running the business. Point of sale. Okay, that's a definite client-based thing. Uh, and then what I'll call dashboard. What I want to provide for every client is a dashboard that says, every day they say,
sit down and they look at this dashboard and they can see how their business is operating. So the CEO has one dashboard, maybe it's cash, maybe it's uh, collections, maybe it's AR balance, maybe it's payables, maybe it's uh, uh, new customers signed up every day, maybe it's a uh, number of orders. There's Each CEO is going to have different hot buttons, right? And I want to bring that, and cloud is what it's, is what is required to really deliver on this, but I want to bring that to the CEO's desk every day. I don't want the CEO going in and saying, enter bill, pay bill, write check, sign check, put it in snail mail. Obviously, that, that world, though, is not very far behind us. Only, only a few years back, that's what I was doing at this leader group, right? So I, I, I think, and I was, I'm far ahead, you know? So there's still uh, a lot of bookkeepers out there that are very invested in that concept of when a transaction occurs, I enter it into the system, and then I print something, and then I do something physically. We're trying to get them all away from that towards more of a dashboard. And then on the accounting side, the bookkeeping can happen over here, meaning to the extent we have to decide what account in the general ledger things hit, we can do that at the accounting firm. We can split the job, essentially, of getting the financial statements done. Uh, uh, the, the accountant will be the consultant, the person that comes in and helps the business look at the operation, look at the business processes, and decide which pieces belong in which areas and which software can help these pieces. So payroll, we can do payroll again back at the accounting firm, or taxes, CFO services, and then dashboard. Notice I put dashboard on both sides. The idea is that the, uh, I say accountant, and I, and I mean accountant slash consultant. Some of us don't do tax, some, some of us just, we're like IT consultants, but we focus on the business process. Uh, we're the ones who are going to create these dashboards for the clients, because they're not going to be able to do it themselves just too big of a project on its own. Uh, obviously, this is anytime, anywhere, better security, better security. See, you guys probably get that because you're at a Zoholics conference, but, but, I, but I get so challenged by people when I say this is better security. Uh, and I don't really want to like argue over it because I can say it's enhanced, it's better, it's worse. It's, you, you, it depends on which one, glasses you want to put on. Uh, but I think overall, given the, the trade-offs, the security aspect, this is much better. Always in sync with the uh, data, um, so and all the IT costs go down in this model. All right, so what you have is this collaboration thing going on between accountant and client, where instead of us being in separate offices, we're still in separate offices, but now we meet in the cloud as though we're in the same office. And that's why I put them in yellow. And then we got this business process chunkification going on. So now clients can pick best of breed for every part of the business process. So I say e-commerce here. Pick the best shopping cart you know, that, that fits for your business. Pick, pick the best online invoicing and bill payment system for your business. Uh, banking and credit card feeds are feeding in. But the thing in the middle here is this accountant branded portal. This is what I believe is going to happen. Right now, many of you guys are using uh, Zoho right now. and you, you, you think I'm going to Zoho. What may happen uh, with Zoho or with Zoho and their competitors, they're all going to, um, well, many of them are going to give accounting firms the option to say, this is uh, Smith and Sons CPA's website. All my clients come to Smith and Son and log into the accounting. So the client sees it as a service of the accounting firm. That's who they trust more than anybody is the accounting firm. Uh, most trusted advisor. So what, what, that's why I put accountant branded website in a secure portal where the GL sits and where the reports sit and where dashboards and documents are kept. As far as the client's concerned, this is the accountant's server, right? And this, the accountant is going to use these Zoho-like uh, companies to, to back them up with the software. And these different chunks are things that we can then connect in. There are other pieces on the internet, you know, uh, services 
internet services, but they feed data into this uh, central central system. So that's sort of where I see it all going. Uh, I think as far as adoption, I think we're here. We're in that chasm, if you will. What, uh, 14 to 17 percent of the people out there get it, and the rest are like, I'll do that when I uh, die. Uh, you'd have to pry that QuickBooks from my cold, dead fingers. You know, They're just so invested in the way they do things. They're not ready for what I just painted in that last picture. So the good part is, you know, I always like to be on that side of that curve when I'm when I'm working, because uh, I assume I'll be living a little bit longer. So I'm always looking for ways that it's going to get better and better instead of worse and worse. If I were to plot where QuickBooks is, or Peachtree is, or any desktop accounting software that that I lived in all these years, on this curve, I would say we're we're easily past the top. And the question is how. How long will it be before those products will tail off in terms of users and, and all? They're, they're all experiencing a lot of difficulty as customers demand online invoicing, online bill payment, banking feeds, all these things that demand uh, features that are out there that customers demand, they're trying to synchronize them into the desktop. And boy, is that problematic. And Tim spends most of his days trying to help those guys keep it together, right? It's good consulting fees for him, but I think we all understand that we're just putting Band-Aids on a broken desktop life for these people. It's only a matter of time. <clears throat> all right, so there's been generations. I'm going to go through these a little bit quicker. Um, we're kind of in uh, about the sixth generation of accounting software, at least in my lifetime. So the 60s and 70s was card readers, dumb terminals, centralized data. You know, it was this real centralized system. And then, um, but the accountants owned the general ledger. Uh, in the DOS PC world, uh, man, that was this huge freedom for the clients. Distributed computing, get off the internet, uh, the mainframes. Clients get to control everything. I kind of said this earlier. Uh, but the bad, the, the bad part is the accountants became isolated from client records. How bad is that? Well, we have, most accountants spend their life doing garbage work, garbage cleanup. Clients get it wrong. I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. They just don't. Uh, I can hire the best bookkeeper, and I still look at the file at the end of the year, and I say, geez, uh, where did we go wrong? And so the accountant spends most of their time cleaning up stuff that should have been done perfectly from the beginning. That's often non-billable work. So this, this has been good, but it's also been bad. Uh, then in the 90s, Windows came in, got a little easier. QuickBooks started really making this process, oh, you you know, you don't need to know accounting to do it, and it, it, it hid a lot of the general ledger be, behind the transactions, so we had the I, the concept of items, where I put an invoice, I put a, you know, widget, and widget knows that it's supposed to credit sales and debit cost of goods sold when I sell it. Ah, okay, so that's, and, and by the way, credit inventory, too. So, the, uh, uh, the items allowed uh, the Windows PC users and QuickBooks to just enter an invoice and then debits and credits happen and it's mostly right. Sales tax gets collected and all. Um, so that really is why, I think more than anything, this is why QuickBooks has done so well over these years. Because it really is viewed as, and you could argue to say, is in fact pretty darn easy to use. I can still point to a million ways it's easy to misuse, uh, but, uh, but, it's, but it's easy nevertheless. Uh, so then there was this integration thing that happened in about 2000, 2001, 2002. Intuit opened up QuickBooks to developers. So developers could start adding you know, things through the QuickBooks SDK. So then you got inventory add-ons like Fishbowl. You got... Um, uh, well, a new one late, lately is called Bill.com for payables and receivables, where uh, you're paying things out of a different place and it just synchronizes the bills and payments inside uh, of QuickBooks. Uh, downloadable credit card transactions. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, actually, he said a little more, but um, all right. Uh, downloadable credit cards where uh, when you spend on the credit card, the Amex charges come down in there. Uh, and also, uh, you know, obviously merchant accounts where I could just charge uh, the, the thing 
straight from the, the customer credit card straight from I think QuickBooks. So this integration was big, and it's what really started uh, uh, taking us down the uh, the pa path of this uh, chunkification that I'm kind of trying to talk about. Is now instead of just using what's there, I can use what's there plus an add-on. Okay. And then SaaS really started happening in the early 2000s. It, it, it started quickly with Net, NetLedger, which became NetSuite. And it was a fantastic, it still is a fantastic product. But what they did with NetSuite when they first developed it is they took the, the model of QuickBooks, which is this thing into which you enter data, and they just put it in the cloud. So now you're just entering data in the cloud. Now, what's happened in the recent past is uh, well, it's in the next slide, I guess. Instead of just taking the desktop metaphor, if you will, of the, of the uh, application that somebody sits in front of and enters data, now there's all these feeds, banking feeds, which uh, Prashant just talked about, that the bank feeds uh, from Yodely is one of the companies that, that aggregate all these bank feeds of information into the general ledger. Uh, now that's going to dramatically change what we... Uh, we'll see over the next uh, five, ten years is the bookkeeper role is going to just change like crazy. And the, you know who's going to resist? The bookkeepers. Because they think their job is entering data. I think their new job will be, if they will come along, managing data flows. Managing data flows of information across probably web-connected databases. And so they're going to see when they get in the office tomorrow morning, they're going to see there were this many orders that came into the web store. There were this many payments that came in from invoices we emailed out yesterday. And they're already in the bank account, and i got to reconcile that, the, that all of the, the uh, uh, deposits actually match up with my records in the general ledger with what the bank says and the e-commerce store. And by the way, the e-commerce also collected sales tax, so now I see in my central place I got my sales tax to be paid, and it's right because it was collected correctly. Oh, by the way, CRM. There were 15 orders yesterday in the in the web store, and all of those new customers entered their own name, address, city, state, zip, and so forth. And that information has to get into CRM. This is data flows. This isn't entering the data or even copy-pasting. This is this new world that I see happening that will... Uh, uh, really change the role of the bookkeeper and change the role of the accountant consultant like we are. Because we got to design the right thing for the clients and the bookkeepers need to come along and do the data flow management and the operational side of that business. So anyway, these tipping points that you've seen that are really causing all this. QuickBooks Online now over 250, actually, actually I think over 300,000 users now in QuickBooks Online. Uh, NetSuite, Intact, Zero, Zoho, Hosting companies are thriving, so you know you can hire a uh, any number of uh, hosting companies that will just basically take QuickBooks and host it in the cloud behind their own security. But really, it's just a Windows terminal server up there that you're, you know, Citrix server up there that you're logging into. So you don't really change anything about how you're using the software, except that you're using it over a connection. Uh, so I think hosting companies are going to extend the life of QuickBooks as we all know, uh, but they haven't changed the benefits overall of this chunkification, best of breed, data flows, all those sorts of things. Collaboration technique, uh, technology is exploding everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, uh, I was just, if you were in the uh, session uh, next door about the whole social revolution and how we haven't really had a technology re revolution over the last seven or eight years, but we've had a s social revolution. We have different ways of communicating with each other and expectations. If you didn't send me back, I, I texted you. It was five minutes ago. How come you haven't responded? You know. Um, so there's whole different ways now that we're communicating, and that really uh, facilitates a lot of these benefits uh, that we have when we start talking about collaborating in the cloud. Uh, online banking is also uh, now really here. It took a long time for this to get going, and this is one of those things where consumers led businesses. Consumers are all using online banking. And so I go to the business owner and they say, oh, we don't want to go to the cloud because that's dangerous. And I say, well, do you use online banking? I'm, oh, yeah, I do. Well, <laughs> you're in the cloud. And by the way, uh, 
if you ever get the argument of uh, the cloud being uh, uh, dangerous, uh, say, if you wanted to opt out of the cloud, what would that really involve? Okay, close all your bank accounts. Close, never have a mortgage. Uh, never have a 401k or any investment account. Basically, completely go off the grid because uh, don't even get a, 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 an electric uh, bill from your... Uh, from your uh, electric service to your house. In other words, you can't opt out of the cloud. You already are in the cloud. And there's more about you in the cloud than you care to want to know, probably, if you're scared about it. I think what you need to kind of get to is, we're all in the cloud now, let's, how are we going to manage the cloud? And how are we going to do everything we can to mitigate the risks of being in the cloud? There's also these file sharing portals everywhere. Uh, so. This concept of the accounting firm delivering the, sa the, the sales tax, but the tax return to you is always used to be this big stack of, you know, here's your tax return, kaboom. Well, now, instead of printing a big tax return, they're publishing it to a portal, and you log in, and it's PDF, and it's powerful protected, and uh, they electronically file it with the IRS. Uh, payroll taxes are now basically just press submit uh, versus before they were this very long, arduous process of putting all the wages in and, the, and preparing the tax return. More and more we're getting to this concept of publishing a tax return into a portal and the clients get access to it. And that's actually a two-way street. Clients uploading documents, source documents, is what the accountants call them, to this portal so that the accountant has those other pieces of information, the 1099s and things, uh, that they use to prepare the tax return. So it's a two-way street. Clients upload documents and, and uh, accountants publish finished tax returns into a portal, secure. Looks like this, the, a service of the accounting firm. So it's a more tight integration of the relationship with the accountant and the client. Uh, and it's sort of the place you have. So five years from now, when you need that return, you don't remember where you put it always with your accounting firm. So this is going to add the stickiness between client and accountant uh, in the future. Internet access is now ubiquitous. I mean, that's probably been that way for a while, but now the cellular networks are really getting good too, uh, and mobile devices is everywhere. And there's an app for that, and you heard about all the new apps that Zoho's doing. There's pretty much an app for everything. So where I think it's going is these, I'm going to try to go a little faster here because they're about four minutes. Uh, it used to be from these paradigm, paper documents and cabinets, to electronic document management systems. That was the first step, to basically getting paperless in document management systems. But then, after we got the doc electronic documents, then we said, well, digital documents in web vaults attached to transactions in the general ledger. So uh, I'm talking about a product here called Smart Vault, which is a vault in the cloud. And I put documents there, and I can, through a, a connection between that cloud thing and my QuickBooks, I can have a bill or an invoice or an employee, or employee record or timesheet or whatever. I can have the document up there connected so that when I'm on this bill, I can just pull up the document on the screen, a PDF of, of the document that's attached. Well, again, in Zoho land, this is no big deal. This is like, okay, but... but Keep in mind that we came from this very desktop, very paper world. Now that, that connection between digital documents and transactions in the general ledger, that's, that's huge. Um, and obviously from snail mail and invoices and statements and all that, there's the everything. There's invoicing, reminders, payments, reconciliations, uh, and that is now really flourishing uh, in, in a lot of different areas. The letters in the mail and brochures in the mail. I, I am in the seminar business. We used to do these 100,000 flyer print and mail in the mail. Do you know how much money it takes to make 100,000 mailers? Just do the math. It's, it's not pretty. Because about 80% of them don't ever even reach the, the person. And then those that reach, you know, it's just such waste of both paper and everything and money in it. So now we can email, tweet, blog, Facebook, all these things. So that's a huge paradigm shift, and that's really only five, seven, eight years. 
that this really has been, there is nobody in my business that's doing mail brochures ever. Although we're considering doing it again because it might be really special. <laughs> oh, uh, they mailed me something? Oh, isn't that? So they, again, these might be pendulums that are going back and forth, but uh, it's a thought. Um, remember how we used to always have to save as if we we're going to collaborate on a document? Save as Doug's, Doug's uh, markups on such and such a date and email them back and forth. And then you'd see it if, you're gonna, if you collaborate on documents, right? Well, now revision tracking in Word or other, other uh, word processing software, but mostly still Word. Uh, and then synchronize documents in shared workspaces. If you, how many people here use SharePoint? Dropbox, well, Dropbox isn't quite this, so let me get to Dropbox in a second, but SharePoint or uh, Google Docs, yeah, those kinds of things. So shared workspaces where we're actually editing the same document that's stored in that shared workspace. So that's a big change. Uh, and then look what's happening at retail. Retail brick and mortar storefronts used to be it. Whatever, whoever came in the door that day was my business. Now we got these e-commerce shopping carts. So this is huge paradigm shift for the retail. So from Excel expense reports, now we got online e-travel and expense man uh, management software. And there's a lot of different providers in this, in this space. Uh, and really where I'm going is, it used to be so much, in fact I made my business on teaching people how to trick software, you know, to, to put data into software to get what you want. So here's how you enter it. Here's how you use the memo in this field and that field. And uh, now instead of focusing there, I'm focusing on automating web-based data flows. If I focus on that and have data flowing from different places, that if it's coming in bad, then I focus upstream. But I'm really now focused towards this uh, connecting data flows. So from d efficient data entry to zero data entry. And that's the other big paradigm that's happening. We used to think of entering, now we're thinking of zero entry. We'll never get to zero, but it doesn't matter to me. We're going to get from 100% to about 2% of entered data. <coughs> and what a different paradigm that means to us. If I'm not entering it, then how did it get there? Oh, I better worry about how it got there. I better worry about how it's connected in. Uh, now there's some challenges. From premise-based server crashes, so we got this LAN with the server that crashed. Oh, big, big problem there. Well, yeah, so going online, that's, that's uh, uh, just a different, bigger problem. <laughs> Web-based service, uh, in terms of services failure. So the internet went out, the, uh, the Amazon EC2 went down, uh, in fact, did on us for uh, 48 hours one day. So things you totally can't control, can't even mitigate yourself, uh, unless you have a, a, an other other way to go. Or from locked saves, which were cool, they live, you physically had it, to now online security best practices. So password management is huge. If you give passwords out to your, to your staff, think about how many passwords all your staff in your company need to all share or have access to, to get in here or get, get in there. Uh, best practices for passwords is probably one of the biggest security threat I think we're, we're going to face in this new new world. So if you're not all over online uh, password management, you should really consider what you're doing there and how you're going to get there. I use something called LastPass, which is a web-based tool that, that I store a database of all of my, my passwords in. It's encrypted on the way up and down. Uh, I think I like it. It doesn't do everything. Uh, but it, it certainly is, is getting me closer to a place where I can have secure passwords everywhere and different passwords everywhere. Uh, so from premise-based hardware software to cloud applications and mobile everything. So that's kind of where, where I see all this going. I think I'll end here because I, I do have some a few other uh, ideas. If you want to talk to me afterwards about, well, what should I use for this or that, I've got a lot of, uh, of recommendations specifically. But uh, uh, this is me. Uh, we have a conference in uh, October. Come to that. It's uh, Go to sleeter.com uh, to get information about that. It's a trade show conference kind of thing where all of the different, Zoho will be there. Uh, all the different uh, providers of these chunks will be in a trade show environment, so you can come and uh, 
look at their products and, and learn about uh, these, these trends as they go. But anyway, thanks for your attention, and I'll be around for that. Thanks.